and is more users on the move. Since the explosion of the mobile phones now, virtually everyone is on, actually most people on the, on the internet right now are using smartphones. And these smartphones are loaded with all the, the, all the applications they need to do their daily activity, from mobile applications to social media applications, to business applications, to immediate time, you just name it, everything is there. Now, once the, once the, once the, people, once the, once the user, users download these applications, they believe the applications should be secure, it should not happen with anything other than what it requires. It should, and it should not take anything from the device other than what it should. A, a camera application of requesting ac access to a config contact is absolutely a red flag. So definitely, we want to consider that as well. Now, for, for mobile application as well, we have banking applications. Virtually everyone has a banking application on your phone, myself included, actually. It makes us easier for everyone. And bottom line is, would more users, some users have to move, and this mobile application from the smartphone, they are easily possible. You can carry one in your pocket. You can from, go from here to anywhere you're going. With that, with that, your, that the obscurity of actually carrying a very big large device. Just your pocket before you can even know. That's just it. Now, when users are using a mobile application, there's something called automatic, or I thought I'd like to describe it, automatic safe mode. What do you mean by that? When a user has the phone, definitely they put a password. They lock it down with the password. They put a biometric, all sorts of security, just to make sure everything is safe on there because they believe it is my device and no one else's. Now, when it's, once they install an application on the device, there's an innate automatic security mode that and a safe mode that they believe that application should not compromise the device. It should not steal. It should not steal the data. It should not compromise the security and anything like that. Now, now that, let's, let's take for an example that you are you, you are running a banking application. Okay, when a user logs in and happens to land. On another person's account, like user he logs in and active say details of user account. Now, for one second, you might think, how is that possible? Let me show you something. This is Klarna. Klarna is a Swedish bank, actually. Recently, you can say that, that was some months ago. Let's look at that time there. That's about, about six months ago. Users were logging in and they were landing on the account of another user. Bottom line is, user he logs in and hangs on user B logs in. Now, take for example now. User B is someone that's very, very private. Lisa knows that Lisa here has seen all his account details, his banking and transaction and everything. He would definitely not feel good and he might even go online, actually 
give you a review that's definitely not good about your application. Now, you might think now this is clear now what really happened. Probably, uh, probably somebody has there, but no, this this error was actually caused by a technical update. When you have the application, that's when this that's when this stuff actually happened. The user actually went to social media to further about social. I'm sorry about this white page actually. Twitter's going to work in Nigeria, so that I will say blank with it. But later, after that, client had to take up other to take the application offline. As you can see here, sorry, the client have going to that for maintenance. So you might think this is not this cannot happen to you, but shortly it, it can happen to anyone since practically no system is safe, but at least you're gonna do your best man to keep to keep up with the pace. Secondly, your application on the store can get infected with malware. What do I mean by this? Once you deploy, once you deploy your application, once you deploy your application, you might think it's all good, it's all safe, and no one can tamper with it. But in recent years, malware threat actors have gotten smarter, just like security professionals are getting smarter, just like a cat and mattress. But at least the security guys are almost on the forefront of all the time. Multiple times, a malware has tried to step the security of, Go of Google Play Store in order to infect the users with malware. Now, let me show you an example. This application. This application is, a, is what is Smart TV Remote on Android is, is at Android on the Google Play Store. It's actually a malware. At first, when you see the application, it, it names my the saving that it is Smart TV Remote. At least Smart TV Remote, I'm gonna use or stuff like that. But lo and behold, a malware security researcher has malware, but it actually discovered that this application was actually a malware, and it was actually a malware detailed out. It was a malware by some 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 some, some vi on virus data. Later, the author of this book actually took apart took apart the application. I later find that the application really contains a malware actually. Now, another thing, another thing entirely, Android mal malware back, another thing which is this. Malware actually can sneak into the beliefs. As you can see, Android banking malware infect 3,000 play users. That's just like about some, some weeks ago. That's not even up to a month, yes. Same thing, the, 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 the threat actors implemented so many things just to work, just to start set all the security measures post in place, post in place. By Google, you have to stop from some such things from happening. But still, they got into the they got into the Play Store. They have to infect some um, application one way or the other. Some one one got that got that application on on their system. And, the, and, and another point is that the possibility that they some good users. Undoubtedly, your your app will contain will contain configuration in which apparently. While we use why our users is communicating with the backend services and stuff like that, because of the communication, we I mean, able to collect data and send it to application, and probably even some internal APIs on your system that is not exposed to the year. But look and below, if you use a public public like uh, Amazon S3, definitely probably that one's quite popular. If your application is not popular, probably, 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 it's going to be exposed on the internet. This is a classic example of that. Example. That's how 100, uh, that's why that's a stack of 100 million users were exposed via most configured cloud servers. This cloud server was not used by, by well, actually used by 100 applications. I mean, it was a misconfiguration information. Not that it was just like an error on the, on the, on the developer or something like that. You might think this might not be you, but, but at least it's an, you are not perfect. Trust me, no one is perfect, but this, you gotta do your best and make sure it's, make your application perfect. But once this happens to you, you know at least you gotta take a little bit of step back, analyze your security, of your, of your application and as your whole knowledge of as well of security as you do. Another one is this. It's a sensitive flow. A sensitive data of what that was it's just 400,000 people actually. Just definitely is an, is an API an API neuro from the from the developer of the application in which data were actually data of student that's just were actually but this was just about 20 about 20 years ago so a few weeks ago. Now if you scroll down a bit these are the sample of data the profile ID, the school ID, the school, but actually the email, the current email, definitely. If you just find that some of this application, these data were exposed online, they might not even take it lightly with you. They might not even use your application again. And trust me, you might even learn about it on social media before you actually use it for that from a good private group friend that, man, your that your application so and so and so and so and so is wrong with it. So definitely, security is not something that we gotta play, you gotta have to play with. Have to take it serious, and it has to be at the forefront of every decision you make, from recording to in business, from everything like that. Because your users are trusting you with their data, with their data, with their device. Particularly if you, if you, they install the application 
your application on your device automatically let us in the email we are not going to we are not going to do anything or not we are not supposed to do anything that you're not meant to do on my devices now another thing anyway, was the struggling number of mobile users right now currently now as you can see how many users have smartphones in the world about 6.3 billion 6.737 6.37 billion and that's about 80.63 percent of people that have today that's quite a large number of multiple people. now back in 2016 and Pokemon Go became quite a world phenomenon overnight, in which people, in which people were using the were using the application, playing game almost every day, every day. Now, let's take an example in which Pokemon Go was actually infected with the malware. Now, look at these figures here. You have the developer of the Pokemon Go and was infected with malware. People did not, people before you know it, people started using credit alert on the system without doing any banking transaction. You might think that is possible. Trust me, it is actually possible. It's come, it is come, it's virtually everything. So, so no, almost anything is hackable. But see, that one, one of the reasons why you try to take security very, very, very seriously. Now, now you might ask, what can you do? Of course, you have to test your application. Depending on the team you have, your procedures for, the, for your application, you have to test your application using appropriate tools. One tool is mobile security, framework, which is what we are here to discuss, actually. Now, the next question is, what is mobile security framework? Mobile security framework is capable of static and dynamic analysis of application developed for the Android, owned by Google, the iOS, owned by Apple, and Windows operating system. Now, the first question is what is static analysis? Static analysis is when you take the complete executable of the file, which is the APK, the Android, or the executable of the file, and you run to Mobisoft, and most of going to do a surgery on the device. Primary surgery, but you're going to take it apart, look for the components, analyze it, and give you a comprehensive report about what is, this is what is going on and what is not going on. Why dynamic analysis is where, when, when the application, you have to simulate when the application is running. You have to know its behavior. You have to be some malware might actually be dormant when the when the user is not is not a user, but actually active when the user picks it up. There are numerous examples in which malware will use listen to sensor of the phone. Once the user pick up the phone, it goes inactive. Once the user drops the phone again, it becomes active again. Ab ab abusing the accelerator of the device actually. Now, the next question is, where does mobile stuff fit in your software development life cycle? Simple. The software development starts like start, start, start with the, the design of the application, the coding, the stuff like that, up down to the maintain, the testing and the maintainers. Testing, that means the application is already in house, it's ready, the product team are getting ready, everyone wants to know when, when, when are we getting this, when are we getting that stuff like that. At that stage, you can just use MobiSort and test your application out. Once you supply the post like, application to MobiSort, most of will go through with analyze the application and tell you what's wrong and what is no wrong. But low and behold, if your application is already hard there before you learn about mobile security framework, actually, then you can pick the application back, get a copy of the application work, and run it through the application, which works. It be, definitely, that is the maintenance phase. Now, how to install mobile software system, which is the format, actually. The first, we're going to start with Google, so follow along. That will work, Google Soft. My child, so many results. Let's just streamline it a bit. We actually look at the docs. So, that should be the first link. Let's click on it. Here is the page of mobile security framework. We list the project developers, the support. If you can support them, please do. And what the learning course and certification available. But if you are in solid the mobile security framework on your system, so definitely we want to work. Check out the system requirements. For the requirements, Windows is our point of our, our focus here, but at least let's go up in case you're using other, other tool, system. For Mac, these are the tools that you need to install, and everything you need to install. Git, Python, Clipatated, Python, JDK, and for Ubuntu, almost the same thing. And for Windows, you will need Git. The first question is why do you need Git? But first, let me close this, 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 this. Why, why do you need Git? Let me show you why. Let me show you why. Oops, Oops, as you can see, this is a GitHub. This is a GitHub. This is the GitHub service tool. Oops, source, open source. Hooray for that. So, once you get to, this is the GitHub repository of, of Mobisoft, actually. There are two ways to, ways to get, there are so many ways you can get the code from this repository for, for, into your system. Among these is, you can actually download the master archive, which is that, and download button right there, but that might not be efficient enough. Another one is to what is to use Git. Git. That's popular, but and I and I used to copy code from Git repository that I had that included Git like GitHub or GitLab. So definitely you will need Git for that. So let's just close that for now. Back. Now, 
I'll be a get git. As well as let's, let's check that out. Now, based on your setup, as you can see, you can choose, you, based on the architecture system, for 32 bit of Windows, for 64 bit of Windows, and for, a, for the portable version which you can carry your pen drive, you can choose the one and select this one. So if I click on that, I'm using 64 bit, let's take that. It starts downloading, but I already have it on my system, so there's no need for that. I can actually pause it and just show you, I already have it on my system. As you can see, I'll put one, two, three, git. Git storage on my system, so definitely I'm not, I don't need to install it again. Now, another one we want to look at was Python 3. Point, between Python, 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 actually, specifically between 3.8 and 3.9. So once you click on the badge, click on open new tab, go to the website. The interface might be quite confusing for so just address, just scroll down the page a little bit and look at the downloads footer button. There we go, download, click on it. Scroll down, scroll down. Said what are we looking for? 3.8 and 3.9, that's right. So definitely we need to look for that 3.8 and 3.9 over there. Click on it. Scroll down a little bit. And yes, if you are using Mac, pick, pick your upper installer bits on your system actually. If you are using Windows, pick up that button. I mean Windows 64 bits, click on that. It's already downloading, but lo and behold, I already have it so I will just pause that and just move on. Now the first thing you might think that why do we need Python? Let me show you why. Some of the components of mobile security framework are actually written in Python. Are actually written in Python. So let's click on the back of the bedroom. As you can see, you scroll a little bit. As you can see, you can see, start up the pie. So definitely, if they, for this to work on your system, you will definitely need Python installed instead because this part, this code is actually Python code and definitely it will require the Python interpreter for your system which will be not that and one, that's one the main reason and all among other that's why you need Python set up on your system. Now another one is JDK. JDK means Java Development Kit provided by Oracle. Definitely, well, as, we, as you see later, most of actually the compiles the code of the application and most application of the Android application and most Java programming language. So a quick start for JDK should land you on the Oracle website itself. That's cool. Luckily for the good CEO, first click on the list. If you scroll down a little bit, this is the architecture you have for the one for the Linux. If you are on Linux, pick the one as suitable for your for your architecture. If you are on Mac, if you are Mac, you can select the one that fits your architecture. And lo and behold, if you are on Windows, which I am, you can select the one that suits your. You can select any one you like, but at least if you go for the download, click on this. I already have that in my system, so there's no need to download that. We can actually pause that as well. So let's just cancel this for now. Cancel. Cancel. Another, yes. Now, up to the next requirement Microsoft Visual C++ build tools. It's another requirement which you need to have on your system for you to get more software working. It should actually link to the Microsoft CW and download. It will actually download a small executable that will later download the build tools on your system, needed for your system. Without all these tools, there's one thing you know. The most soft one is all on it, as you can see, it's just a small executable. Like, it's completely done, completely download. It's completely download already. Now, another one tool we will require is open SSL. As you can see, open SSL, open SSL stands for open source. See, this is the page you go to in which you download. Just scroll down here, pick the right architecture on your system. But first, let me see if I have open SSL on my system. Open SSL. Yeah, sorry about that. Yes, it's on my system, so definitely I'm going to But once again, we can actually confirm. Go to the web. It's installed there. Yes, that's installed folder for the open system. Definitely, I've got that installed there, so I don't need to worry about that. So back to the other requirements. Now, the next one, what? You can change to HTTP. WK HTML to PDF. That, what, what's the job of the study? This one actually converts the static reports, as you see later, of the of the of the application from Microsoft into the PDF format, which you can either carry about and just analyze on, on, on your on your system. Now, with that out of the way, 
work the installation. Now, as I said earlier, as and as you've seen earlier, let's just close all the requirements. And let's leave that. Yes, we're gonna leave that. Let's leave that. And click that, that, and go good. Now, this is good. This command actually will clone the entire repo. We clone the entire repo, which is this repo, of course, to download everything on your system. At the time of at the time of speaking, which is today, December 4, 2021, the installation file of our move soft supports about 1.5 gigabytes of, of disk space. Now, even though I already have to my system, but let's just show you, let me just show you how. Now, first, let's clearly let's go to I already have my system, so let me just do another directory just for demo purposes. Is there anything there? Mm, not it. Okay, now let's go back. Let's copy this link. Right click and copy back to our command line, paste it. No, oh, right click and what and paste. With that, once you hit the command, this command will download the entire mobile soft GitHub repo which you've seen the line, download it onto your system. So you can see it's quite big files. Over 10,000 for over 1,000 or 15,000. So I already have it to my system, so there's nothing for that. I'm just gonna close that. And what I'll close the button. Now, with that, with that installed on your system, your folder directory for Mobisoft should look something like this. As you can see, let me show you the size. Yes, see, I see. About 1.5. Okay, more than that. After yes. You get, a, you get to white if it's quite large in the first place. Now, this is the, this is the, this is the entire folder. Now, once it downloads on your system, you need to pop up some setup, which is what I'm going to show you next now. Let's go back to our command line. I've done it on my desktop, so let's go back to the desktop. Okay, CD. Okay. Catching that now. A little bit now. Once the installation, once you, the repo has cloned to your system successfully, the first thing you need to run is what is this particular file, set up the bat. I'll write down this idea, put the dot here. The first slide was set up dot bat. Now I'm not gonna run one of the twice. I'm not gonna run this on my system because I already have it on my system, but but once you run it, it will download all the requirements that most actually needs to run your system. First, it's gonna check for the Python version, all the stuff like that, the appropriate permission is set, make sure you are you actually run this command in administrative mode and stuff like that. Once it once it downloads, then it that's when you can actually run move software in system. But first, since I already have it, there's no need for that. So what I need now as in documentation, since I already have all the tools, it works is to run it using that command. But first, let me close that. So, run so let about that. Run dot bat 127.0.0.1. That's local lost 8000. Okay. With that, most of you running on, on, that, on, on that particular port. Now, now, let's go back to our browser and check it out. On a local system, one, one two, seven, one, two, seven, one, two, seven, one, two, yes, here we are. Let me just close that in the hand. This is the interface for mobile security from once it's on your on your system. There are so many ways you can go about analyzing your application on system on this, on this application, actually. The first aspect of what is drag and drop. You actually drag the application and just drop it into this interface and most of you do it same behind it. Or probably you can actually upload the application analysis on, on the go. Just, just to upload and analyze. I see. And the test APK file we're gonna use. So once I select the test APK file and just open it, it's gonna analyze it. One more thing. This actually run to actually bring in the report quite very fast. On the, on the first scan, actually, it's depending on the APK side, it's going to take a while for the scan to complete. Now, the, the, the reason why you're saying this is so fast is because I've already run the scan before and said so definitely, we also have some kind of catch at the back end this, that. Remember that I've run the scan, so definitely there's no need for me to, there's no need for you to go over the scan again, but at least 
if you go back to your command line, you'll see the details of what of what is already running behind it. Now, the first thing now, the first thing you want to check is that you load you can try to solve the application. Actually, the Java source code of the application and stuff like that. So let's go there and see what's going on. This might take a while to load. At least you already had another option. What to be this small? Okay, here we are. Still loading. You can certainly read the small code, download Java code, and if you are still interested, you can certainly download the game. And it seems to be complete. Good. Now, if you have to view the source, just click on this panel button here. Click on drop menu here, and what? Click on that. That same tree. Just go open tree. You can actually keep what you actually you can actually view the status code. You can actually do it for every step of that. I what and you see the resulting Java code behind the application. Another one you want to check out what its permissions. What permission is this is the system using? Now, as you can see, asset access to network is good, the Wi-Fi state good, download the notification unknown, but the one that's probably of interest is what read external storage in which analyze it as what is dangerous definitely this application should probably should not do should not do that because it's meant to do another thing and now it's carried external storage that's why most of the flag was as a dangerous application another one where it can actually write to the external storage definitely this application but the word the reason why both of say that it's dangerous because it's not meant to do that it's not meant to do another thing entirely now you can still go back and check the next page of the application but still that's not a good now and now, which place we want to check out what is the what is the analysis starting what the manifest analysis. Now, good. Now, as you can see that look, if you take a look at this, you can see the application has clear text traffic enabled. What is clear text traffic, traffic, traffic enabled? Now, clear text traffic are probably used protocols such as HTTP and FTP, which are not secure. If you have Wireshark on your system, you can actually intercept some of the data or that is going out from your system from my data is using HTTP. Definitely, that's why we have HTTPS. As you can see, HTTPS will secure the connection from your client and from you, a client, to the server. Now, this application now has clear text traffic edit mode, which is not supposed to be so. It's not supposed to be any, any data transmitting through this HTTP can be intercepted and be intercepted by would be threat actor, actually. Now, other thing you can actually view in, in the data world, as you can see, intricate details. A form of the thing that presents the application, which is not supposed to be, which is not supposed to be so definitely something you, as a developer you need to watch out in your application as yourself, your application by yourself. Now, the code analysis, as you can see, here's the code analysis. Say, files may contain code sensitive information like username, password, and keys. Let's talk about that. Now, if your application, definitely your application is connecting to a mobile, a, a backend, a backend. It's advisable not to put adequate keys in your application, probably just to minimize time, probably to minimize time in which you have to go there and just find a way to connect, uh, find a way to go, minimize the time and just find means you use maintaining stuff like that. Most important adequate keys are found to be a vulnerability in the application in which all the attackers will compromise the device and gonna give probably the key to the entire kingdom actually. Now, if you go down a little bit now. As you can see, the hubs logs information, in logs information, sent information from the log. What are the information? Probably the probably some information regarding the device should not be logged, but still obviously indicate that the application is actually logging. It's actually logging it, which is something as a developer, don't try and log sensitive application, sensitive data, probably the don't debug code that contains the specific user details. It's an application because definitely another application can affect the data and just pick it up from, from where from where you save it on your device. Another one is binary analysis. This out. We got the shared code used by the device, which you might not even know, but at least it's the libraries which the application uses, as you can see, it's a high definitely you need to watch out for that and stuff like that. Just take Take a look at this, provide me enough insight for you to decide what you are going to do, what you are going to do next. 
intricate bit of everything now you can't check at the what net file analysis and what what file analysis now the first one another one you want to take about what the man analysis section the man analysis section but we go to we got we probably the domain malware check but we'll continue that once we take a break we'll continue after that after the break please Hey, I'm good. Can you hear me? The application is actually good as you can see all is good 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 all is good you can see that's good there eh? it's good all is good all is good now the question is what happens if this bad day i'm probably the first question to ask you what is what is a domain a malware domain or a domain malware now when when malware infects your particular system they communicate with the they communicate with the cnc also a cnc their cnc is software for command and control servers now when when security when security ninjas actually the security guard is quite professional they're going on hunt for a malware one of the reason one of the main thing that I identify is the in which in the DCNC, which is which is the IP address which is the IP address of the command and control server once it had identified them they can release this this IP address as as IOC which IOC means indication of compromise now once you release the application release the IP addresses definitely it will be flagged among all the security vendor capacity, all the light, all the lights you can just limit. All these IP addresses will be flagged flagged at least. So if this flag definitely it should definitely it should definitely what show up in this place. And now what you can check what is the recognition. What the string, the trackers are what? And the and the comp and what string and so and so like that. You can check out the component, the activities. What application, what applications, what activities are being used as the application and stuff and stuff and stuff like that. The services the application are using. And what the libraries, the files, what and, 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 and definitely all stuff like that. But, but first, let's go back to what the malware analysis. What manifest security analysis, 
specifically the manifest analysis. Okay, let's scroll down a little bit. The discussion actually, let's scroll next. I think, okay, I think that should be in the code analysis section. Now, as you can see here, it's a ND5 is a weak hash known in terms of hash collisions. The first question you might ask is what, what is hash collisions? Hash, hash functions as ND5, they take, they, they take a file and what and generate a, a string, a numerical and alphabet, alphanumeric string, probably. A numerical string between numbers and alphanumeric string, alphabet and numbers that would be a representation of the application, of the application, application itself. Now, it should be unique for every application. Application A should not have probably should not have the same MD5 as application B. What I actually means is a situation whereby application A has the same as I was as application application B. Definitely, that's not something we should we should that's something that's quite scary. As you can see here, the severe score for the or such is what the same point is very, very high. And what's the score again now? As you can see, application uses SQL database and execute raw SQL query. First things first, you never trust that your user will be, all of them will be good guys, will be good guys actually. Some actually want to test your application to see how good it is and stuff and stuff like that. All your inputs from the users, either directly or indirectly, should be sanitized. Do not trust that they will send you the correct, the correct, correct format of the file. They might actually send you malformed query just to see if this man doing his job probably. Now, once, once the users send you a mouth from the SQL query, they can actually do something. So that's quite dangerous thing. Even depending on how you set up your application, an SQL query may actually result in what in data, your, the entire database has been dropped. So definitely, you need to watch out for that. The advice is that all, since all that are coming from users should be sanitized. All inputs, sorry, I beg your pardon. All inputs coming from users should be sanitized and just don't trust any input that's coming from your, from your, from your device, from your users. Including your password, if you have your username, make sure you sanitize it before you actually execute on a backing service. Now, as you can see, the SHA1 is a weak ash collision. The SHA1 is actually a weak ash collision, no, it's a weak ash, ash, no to have ash collision. Now, this almost the same thing as MD5, but here, this is an attack demonstrated online called, called Shattered Attack. As you can see, you can go to the page, that's the URL over there. But see, you can, as you can see, a good document, a good document here produces seen seen shaman ash, and the bad document also was also produced in shaman. Definitely, if you can't tell the good and the bad file, there's no way for you to know which one is good. And this is quite dangerous. If you can't tell who is the good guy and who is the guy, but definitely, it's, it's the reduces trust and what leaves leave, you are left in the computer that which file you are going to use. The point, the lesson is that you should use another hash function, as, as I mentioned in the article, like shared prefixes for, for the data. Another one is what the application uses insecure random null generator. If you've coded in JavaScript before, they said call random code for random, which will generate random number, but still, it's been shown so many times like some random general, random number generator after they generate predictive values. Now, let's take an example. When, user, you, when your user logs into your application, if it's an application that requires going online, you assign each a session to a, a, to a token, which will probably show in their, their web address as, as, as seen here. And another user, too. Another user might think that once, or, or what if I just change this numeric string to a few other string? Let's see what's going to happen. The thing is that it might actually land on the, on the account of another person. Now, from a security perspective, once and once a random number is generating predictive values, Predictive values definitely it's not advisable for you to use this in that. Let me let me secure the content now. And that was what I address disclosure. What is IP address? IP address so which, which the IP address of the on which the application is internally is exposed is exposed is exposed and which is exposed online. I mean, which at the IP address the users the application using internally is actually exposed. This can give threat actors a considerable insight. A considerable insight into into the architecture of your ap application, which is the... another example. It's affected LinkedIn recently, so let me just go online and show you what I mean.
That's it. This was about four years ago, but if you look at this, take a look at the story. Now what IP address disclosure, this is actually LinkedIn. LinkedIn is quite popular. That means if you can affect LinkedIn, virtually, even your application can be affected by it. So definitely it's something you need to be aware of. So, so hold and hold. Mobisource gives you a considerable insight into the internal workings of your applications and put you in a position in which way, but you can move forward either if the application is, we are still testing the application, probably it'd be easier to be released if you are still testing the application. You get to know what you need to fix in the application and, and whatnot. Another one is if the application is already out there, you can actually download the application, get another application was run it through mobile, so that will definitely is in maintenance phase. So once you want, once you once you run the application through Mobisoft, go through all this, go through all this, all the services and, and stuff like that. Sorry about that. Go through everything all. Just everything, one by one, one by one, one by one, and see which one, which one you should analyze. But his, I'll advise that you go through every single, every single one of them, now to gain a considerable insight about the internal workings of your application. Testing application, we've done, we've already done that now. Keeping up with the security. Now, since you've learned how to use deployed mobile security framework on your system now, you've installed it and stuff like that. The next, the next question you, have, you might want to ask is that this might be actually much. The, keeping up with the security, definitely everyone is busy. We have daily tasks you can do. But there is something listed on your screen right now can actually help you to keep up pace with what happened in the security, security ecosystem. So the first one was is the hacker news. Let's go. Hacker News has been running for, like, over, for, for as long as I know, over 10 years now. They cover news from mobile security, cyber attacks, vulnerability, malware, and, and stuff like that. If you have queries, just click on the malware, but you definitely get definitely a whole mal news related to malware. But since you are a developer, you are not, not much interested in whole news about malware, but specifically Android or iOS. So definitely, you might actually resort to Google. Entitled in type operator and just limit it what to what you can use. So, definitely, all the things you're going to get about specifically with the Android, as you can see, and this see five days ago, just five days ago, an Android back in the end. Okay, we've talked about that. We've talked about that recently. So, definitely, we've talked about it recently. So how the news you're gonna get would be about what Android just limited to that particular site itself. You can actually just bookmark the address, and just keep it, and you bookmark me and open it and update your computer once, once, once in a while. Now, the next one is Bleeping Computer. Bleeping Computer is, is run by Lauren, Lawrence Adams. And they have lots of from the download tutorial videos. Just scroll down and look for any story of interest that that might be based on your based on the OS you're targeting or Android OS, just scroll down, look for the news, but that, that might be a dot tag. Just let's keep it the same thing that we do for the Akanus. So Android. Okay. Scroll down a little bit, you can see the latest Android. There's even a tag for Android, just scroll down, open that. As you can see, fake support again to things to install Android back in malware. So this is how the news just work. Definitely, once you know what's going on, you can actually be in contributor or not to prevent it in your application as well. It's quite long, just do your best. Try and read at least probably one or two articles about web security or just malware affecting Android application, application, at least one or two in a day. You will do yourself a favor and also you, you thank it later. Now, we leave security by assets. I said it's quite popular, so release security is their blog with all the security researchers publish their content on. They have news on virtually everything you can do from everything you can think of from malware, from malware to scamming to everything like that, even to news about privacy and stuff. You can follow them on Facebook, 
Twitter, or your YouTube and the Twitter link there. If you are interested in you can actually join the RSS as well. And also secure this backup is key. Secure list is run by Kapeski, the makers of the antivirus and the internet security itself of the same name. It is quite, the site is quite large and it covers so many things about threat reports. Sorry, secure list. Sorry, sorry. Apologies. There you go. So, it's quite, it's, the site is quite large from Probably focusing on threat report and stuff like that, but you want you be interested in just scroll down a little bit and um, mobile trades. So if you're a mobile developer, please and please just move on this page and keep yourself updated. And just go through the news. Mind you, most of the news by on, on, on scale list are quite extremely detailed. So definitely want to grab a couple of the common. Another one when the little group. Cyber Monitor, uh, Risk of Repo, just a Cyber, a, sorry about that, Cyber KPT. This hub. Before I click on the list, click on it. The list is quite long, so if you are looking for threat related to Android or iOS, just use the your browser functionality to find it for that you to control F or Mac or Windows key on F. Android F actually search for Android. Sorry, but Android. There's yeah, some Android news where you can just do click down, click down. What? Just pick a news of your interest. And definitely it's about Android. If you switch the search string from Android to high OS, definitely I just expect the other news. I just three news about iOS. At least you can also bookmark this and set up see as I just keep the same updated. Security Week publish news almost every single day. So your your focus is what to be the mobile threat section of that of this page. Read all the news that is right. You can find a way to just read the news in this section just to keep yourself update, updated. So, it was so many things happening in the threat landscape, but faster than you can even think of from zero day exploit to malware to ransomware, everything happening to in a so, so fast pace. But at least you're gonna do you have to do your best just to keep up with the pace. So, these are some resources you can actually use. You can actually use now. Where to go from here? Now, from a developer standpoint, you might, you might you definitely might think that it's not the job for you to focus exclusively on security. But but I'm gonna tell you, you need to think of security in in everything you're doing. From the first time you conceive the idea of probably if you conceive the idea and just give it to you design it, on the first time you receive the design the application, application, thinking from the security product, security perspective, what can possibly go wrong, and just know that at the back of match, some users are there. They just want to break out. They want to break your application. Just force for the phone, or probably just report it to your email. Hey, we found this. We found that. Go and fix it. And the second one is periodically pull your application from the app store and test that more stuff. As I said earlier, once you dip, once you upload your application to the Play Store, you might think it's actually safe and nothing is going. But as I've shown it in the presentation, malware can actually start to test some of the security mechanism put in place by the Play Stores. You have to just infect. The application that user will eventually learn. You just have to go to the Play Store with the intention and mindset that everything is okay. Not it's the Play Store, definitely the security guy have verified every application before they have to download it. But no low and below multiple times. Malware has actually got to pass Google's Play security network, infect application used by thousands of users before you know it. User download it and you think it's safe. On the other hand, it's not, it's, not, it's not safe. Now, as I said earlier, you can visit the security site. As I've detailed earlier, you see them, you bookmark them, and be your boss best to at least read one or two stories every single day. Once you don't want to see at least it, it adds up. You might want two stories today, another story today. Before you know it, you might, you will even get considerable insights 
on how to or level up your security, the security of application, or what? Let them take your security knowledge on how to build a better application in the, in the future because security is not just a woman's job. As you can see, you, you do your part, Mobisoft, you free, so let it there to what? To make sure AMA have you've done your part now. Use Mobisoft to, to test it out again to know what, what you missed or probably what you do not even know at all. Then you can you actually go online, do some research, not to fix it. And, Last one, what is for you to what is to, to just stay safe. Stay, it's, it's not, it's actually not easy to be an application developer, you know. You have to what write the code, you have to write the code, do so many, do so many things, read so many, read probably read so many books, and what. But that's this just take care of yourself and also take care of your users. How do you do that by making sure your application is secure? Be because they are counting on you that app, your application is good, it is secure, and it's not going to compromise their, their data. That's all for me, and thank you very much.